Let's get started. Ooh, user. Chill codes. So we have a user manual here for the Comet 64. Let's look at the interface. Your task will be to write the instructions to tell the computer what to do step by step. I like it. And then over here, we have our syntax. We have a reg, which can store a float value, int, bool, string, and car. All right, so the basic syntax of the language is as follows. Operand equals operand, operand equals operand plus operand. Huh. That's not an explanation. Also, this right here just says, note each line of code must end with a semicolon. My face is not covering anything. Code. This looks right. So writing to registers. I like it. Reading from registers. So it looks like you have one register of int, if I understand this correctly. Yeah. That's weird. Output equals input, so it's output equal to input. So that would just immediately output whatever you had. All right, then you have arithmetic operations, and that's going to be reg and int. You can add strings together too, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to put quotes around your strings. That must be because there aren't any um, named variables, it looks like. Yeah, I don't see any variables. Interesting. And then what about if statements? Labels can be used to mark a place in the program in order to jump to that line later. So we're not dealing with if statements here, we're dealing with jumps. Jumps are used to change the execution order. You can do jump if true Dave, jump if false Dave. Got it. Then we can do checks. This is how we determine our ifs. Checking something sets bool true or false accordingly because bool is a register. Remember, bool is a register. We only have one bool. Launch discount. Query, read the values from input and write them to output after a discount of 20%. Example, input 100, 20, 45. Output 80, 16, 36. Consult the user manual for further assistance. So I would have my int equal to input. I would set my register equal to int divided by 100. Then I would multiply my register by 20. Hmm, that would give me my discount, but it doesn't subtract it. Can I multiply by an amount? Because if that's the case, all I have to do is take my input and multiply it by 0 0.8, and that should give me a 20% discount on it. And then I can just do output equals reg. This is where math comes in handy. Let's see. Let's test that. So this is my like step through. Oh, uh, and then I can tab to see my registers. So my reg is currently zero. My int is currently 10. My input is 10. Then I should return eight. If it's 20, then I should return 16. Ah, so let's play this. hundred percent. Yay. Delightful. 15 pass tests. Optimization. So the challenge lines is two. Use two or fewer lines. Your solution has three. Hmm. Well, do I need this int? Do I need any of this? Can I just make this input times 0 0.8? Too many operands use registers for arithmetic operations. So I would just have to do reg equals input times 0 0.8. That's interesting. So apparently I can't add multiple things here. I can only do one per line. All right, I can play your game. Thank you. Much better. There we go, number of cycles 30 and use two or fewer lines. Why so negative? Input contains negative numbers only. Remove their negativity and output them. Example, input negative two, negative five, negative nine, output two, five, nine. So in this case, all we need to do is multiply by a negative one. So I would say reg equals input because they said that the input only contains negative numbers. So I don't need to check if it's a negative number or not. And then my output equals my input. And I think that's as small as I can make it. What? 
What? Second operand? Oh. This was supposed to be an equal sign. There we go. Output equals input. That's as small as I can make it. Is this running? It's kind of hard to tell. Hmm. My outputs are negative. That's because I'm passing input. I'm supposed to be passing reg. There we go. Yes, excellent. I noticed that my face is in a very unfortunate position because you can't actually see the outputs. I don't think I've seen this before. I like it. Perfect! Size test, speed test looks good. On the globals, I'm in the smallest bucket. And pro move. Be my guest. Read the weight kilogram followed by the height m values from input and calculate the BMI. The formula is weight divided by height squared. Interesting. I'm going to open up my tab. So in this case, let's see. My int should be equal to input. And that's going to be my first value or my kilograms. And then I want to say reg equals input. Yeah, I can do this right. Times input. And then I can come down here and I can say reg equals int divided by reg. Hmm. That should be right. Wait, height squared. Yes. Yes, this looks right. And then my output is reg. Nothing too complicated here. Uncle Scientist says, wouldn't that read input twice? Yes, it would. I can do this, though. And I can do reg equals reg times reg. Let's run it and see what happens. I have no idea if these are the correct values. It hasn't given me any errors yet. That looks correct. What does it say? So I've got 5550. Oh, and apparently that's the global that everybody has. Huh. Okay. What goes up? Query, ignore the input for now and output all the numbers from 1 inclusive to 100 inclusive. Let's see, so we start at 0. So let's set, why don't we set reg equal to 0? Check. Reg is less than 101. No, check reg is less than 100. And then what we'll do is when we do that, we'll say print reg, reg plus plus. Mm, can we do this with int? Yeah, I can do int plus plus, but I don't know if I can do reg plus plus. And then I would say check int is less than this. And then up here at the top, I would say, let's see. RickyD096 says, it says inclusive, you need the less than or equals to 100. That's what I'm still puzzling out and kind of thinking about. Um, I think I need, I don't want to call it output. Uh, how about print num? Can I indent? Hmm. And down here we'll say jump false. Well, jump true. Jump true colon num. Is that accurate? Let's look at the user manual and check. So we would say check input. Yeah, there's no less than or equal to. So if it were that, we need 101. Mm-hmm. This is going to start at zero. Ah! All I have to do is remove this. Put the print here. Print. Int. 
check that this is less than 100. If it's less than 100, continue. Jump true, prednum. Uh-oh, missing semicolon at the end of this int zero. Perfect. Now that I've got that semicolon, I should be able to... Let's see, int plus plus, print int. Why did I think print int was a thing? That's not a thing. This is output equals int. Perfect. All right, now we'll step through it. Int one, jump true, print num. Uh-oh. Second operand after jump not recognized. User manual. Jump if. Okay, so we say jump if true and then this. Got it. As soon as we have the syntax, this should be easy. Jump if true, print num. There we go. Now we're gonna start cycling through. Uh, let me hit tab so we can actually see things. 20, 21, 22. Is there a double speed? Double speed. Flawless. Is there a shorter way to do this? Challenge lines two? Challenge lines two. If I get rid of this zero, my int starts at zero, so I'm fine with that. Int plus plus. Can I output equals int plus plus? I'm gonna check this and see if it still works. No, I cannot. How on earth did they get two? Ricky says, nice challenge. Can you do check int plus plus? If I do check int plus plus, Hang on. Ooh. Second operand after this not recognized. Yeah, so no, I can't do check int plus plus. The weirder part is I need a jump, don't I? This is what I don't understand, is how am I supposed to do the loop? Right? Like, that's the challenge. Because if we take a look at this, oh, and we run this, they're expecting two lines of code. Just two. Uh, Vosjidio says multiple instructions per line. My number of cycles is twice what's expected, too. I feel like the print num has to be a thing. <laughs> Labels cannot have other operands on the same line. This works though? Does this actually get me four lines? Oh, I never stop. <laughs> How marvelous. Yeah, so my outputs are not happening. So my output equals int is not happening. Oh, no, bring that back out. Here's the part that I don't understand. How would I strip this down to just two lines? Because I need this check-in, I need this label. I'm missing something. I'm missing something feisty. And I want to know this because this is going to influence me for basically the rest of this, right? Like if I can't figure out this teeny tiny method that they have of looping, Uncle Scientist says, does it automatically loop? No, I have to create the loop, right? So like if we take out all of this stuff and this print num, let's see. Speed it up. What? You scoundrel! That's not. That's not one to one hundred. 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 That's one to infinity. 
that. Last starty. And that's very. That's very witty. Uh, let's see. Output equals inch. That's naughty. That's. That's very. That's very inappropriate. <laughs> Word count is off. Unrecognized syntax. Oh. Int equals 101. Why do I keep producing 100? Ah, because I have this int equals 101. Is it going to make me do the loop this time? Int 100. I feel like there's got to be a clever way of getting around this by using the switch. Hmm. Okay. So I do int equals 100, int minus minus. And then right here I would have a print. And then here I would say check int greater than zero. And if this is true, I would say jump if true print yeah that's the way that's shaped yep that outputs 100 99 let's see what it comes up with this time ricky Oh, Ricky D0 96 says reg equals 100 minus int. Isn't that fancy? I feel like I'm not a cheater. Yeah, there's that three line. This is definitely like reg equals 100 minus int. Output equals reg. Like, I don't, I don't cheat in games. I'm like, oh, you told me to output this amount. I'm outputting this amount. Let's open up the tabs. Ooh, that's, that's very spicy. It's very spicy. But we got to be part of the three line crowd. Ooh. Number cycles 302, challenge cycles 404. Oof. That's that's spicy. All right, so compare the pair for each two values from input, output the greater one. Hmm. Okay. Int equals input. Let me see what my values are. And then I would say check int is greater than input. Mm hmm. Hmm. I feel like I have to do reg input because otherwise I lose access to what this value was. Right? Now I'm doubting myself. Now I'm like. Now I'm like, what tricky little thing did they put in here for like how to handle this? So I'd have output equals int output equals reg I would normally do something like put a startup here Maybe an end. Hmm. And then I would say for this check. Well, I don't need this start. I can be smarter than that. Well, no, okay, I do need this start. I keep cycling back and forth. 
All right, so I would say jump. Mm hmm. If false, and we'd say be greater. And then on here, we'll just put be greater. So this will be the case where B is greater. And then down here, I'll do jump to start. No. Up here, I'll put jump to start. This is not going to be the most optimal way of doing this. Aaron Tara says you only need to push one input. But then if I'm wrong, how do I get my old input? Right? Like if I'm if I'm not storing it and I've got my check here, how do I have access to that? Missing semicolon at the end. The only way I can think of is like a subtraction game. What do we get? Test 10 out of 10, number of lines 9, challenge line 7. So like if I have negative 4, negative 22, right? And I go into here and I check int is greater than reg. Int would be smaller. Uh, Ricky D096 says, so put reg equals int. Oh! I see it now. Yeah, I see it now. Okay, now I see it. Uh, let's see. Reg equals in, and then my output is here in B greater. Mm -hmm. Jump if true. In equals reg. A greater. A greater. Greater. That's the trick. Int greater. I like it. Oh, and I can remove the start. That's right. Because I'm no longer jumping to it. Yeah, that is the smallest size. I like it. I like it a lot. Number of line seven, challenge line seven. Number of cycles 64, challenge cycle 65, and we're right there in that smallest bracket. I like it. I like it a lot. That's fun. Ooh, and then we go to the doppelganger. Query. Input contains a list of dates, but some dates are written twice in a row. Output only the duplicates. How do I know? How do I want to do this? Output equals input, first of all. Output only the ones that are duplicates. So I get my first value. And what I have is reg, right? And I want to say check reg. Mm, I can't do equals input. Because then I'm never updating reg. Reg equals input. int equals input. So I say int is equal to input. Okay. And then I want to check if reg is equal to int. If these values are the same, jump if false. And we're going to jump to... I don't know. Let's call it update. I'm going to put update down here and update is going to be reg is equal to int. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to say output is equal to int. I'm doing too much here. I can already tell that. Let's see. There's a way to do this without doing this. Because mm. I don't need the input value unless they match. But I do need the input value to update it so I can find out if the next one is a match. 
Uh, missing a semicolon somewhere. Right here. And right here. So I checked 1991. There's got to be a better way to do this. This runs, though. Let's see. So this passed. Hmm. We're equal to the number of lines and we're lower than the number of cycles. Five is possible, but no one's done it yet. Fewer cycles is possible as well. Hmm. So if I break this down, I have a storage line. I have a checking line to see if they're duplicates. I have a logic control statement. I have an output statement. And then I have this, which sets and updates. I would need to somehow handle both of these at the same time. Hmm. Jump if false start. Everything passes. Lines are six. Number of cycles is 89. Hmm. Nobody else has figured out the five yet. I guess I'll have to settle with what everybody else was fine with in terms of six lines and... How did I end up with... 91 cycles as opposed to 89? Oh, it looks like I'm still in the 80. 89 for my best run. Let's try this one. Query says zero marks the end of a package. Output the sum of every package. Example input 4260. Hmm, that seems straightforward. So reg equals int plus reg. And I would just say check int equals zero. Um, this is going to be get, and this is going to be sum. Mm, output, sum. And then up here, let's see, jump if false, sum, and if it's true, we go to output, uh, output equals, no, come on, equals reg, semicolon, 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 semicolon. Output equals reg, reg equals zero, semicolon, and then we'll rerun. Let's start through this. So I have two. So four plus two, oh no, nine. Plus two, one, three. Then we come across this zero. The number doesn't change because it's zero. Check int equals zero. Here we go. So we output reg equals zero, and then we come back to sum. Ooh. to be working. I like it. Number of line seven, challenge lines nine. Oh. Ooh, it's the smallest size too. It looks like only one person has managed to get the fewest number of cycles. Hmm. I wonder how I change this to reduce the number of cycles. I wonder if I can get that just by running this again. Oh, 110. What did I get last time? 109? So if I run this multiple times, I get different cycle counts? What? Oh, that's weird. That's interesting. Alright, alright. Time for a roundabout. Query. Input contains decimal numbers only. Round them to the nearest integer before outputting. Example. 2.3 is a 2. 7.8 is an 8. 15.5 is a 16. Hmm. Let's see. 
I'm gonna hit that tab. So reg equals input. Because int can't support this. Is there a remainder function? I have plus minus times divided by. Interesting. Int equals reg divided by one. What would I get in int? Into zero. Hmm. Into thirteen. Hmm. Reg equals reg minus int. Check. Reg is greater than point four. Dump if true. So let's invert this. If this is less than 0.4, we're going to jump to output. If this is greater than 0.4, meaning it's 0.5, then what we're going to do is we're going to say int plus equals 1. Yeah, and then what we do for output is we say output equals int. This is very lengthy. Missing semicolons. Semicolon. Semicolon. There we go. All right, let's see. Mm, it sure seems to be working. It would have told me if I got the wrong answer. expected eight. Eight point four. Oh, check if reg is less than point five. There we go. This should work now. Mm. And it's loading. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's see, number of cycles 112, number of lines 8. 3! Three. 3! Three. 2? Two. 2. 2 lines. 2 lines. Hang on a second. If I go int equals input. 10.3 is 10. 0.8 is 0. Yeah, so it just hacks off the end. Int equals reg divided by 1. I don't need to do this. I can just do int equals reg. Reg minus reg is zero, jump of true output, two, user manual. Are they using a string? Because there's only one, right? Like what happens if I go in here and I make this a string? And then I get what, zero? Let's see. Car equals str0. 
negative one. Next input is not a string. And if I say reg equals input, how did they get it in two lines? Right, because that's two lines. Ricky D, you are magnificent. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. Int equals input. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. Int equals endpoint plus 0 0.05. This is it. Yes. I don't even care. Yes. No, stop. It's int. It's not reg anymore. This is it. This is how you get it down to two lines. That's the piece I was missing. Yeah, hit play. This is why I stream programming games. Math! This is what math does. This is what math does. Oh! 30 cycles! Mmm. Yes. Ricky says, yeah, I'm a cheater. This isn't cheating. This is not cheating. This is math. Cheating is when you're like, I'm just going to overflow the buffer and have like 100, 200, 300. This perfectly matches what they asked for. And it will every single time. <sighs> just around. Query. Input contains integer numbers only. Round them to the nearest 10 before outputting. Example. Input 7, 26, 113. Output. 10, 30, 110. Can I do the same thing here? And then int divided by 10. And then int equals int times 10. Right? And then I just say output equals int. And it works exactly the same. Oh, I need to see the actual results. Yay! It's the same principle as last one. Achievement unlocked! End of disc one! Yay! We did it! Four. This has been Comet64, and this has been a ton of fun. This is Shell Codes. I've been playing Comet64 on my Twitch stream. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video with disc two. Testing, one, two, three, can you hear me? This is my audio.